Frog's Point Honey, let's cook! The only ingredients you need to make a perfect porterhouse are a porterhouse steak, salt, pepper, and garlic. That's it. To make the perfect porterhouse, you need a really good cut of meat. This porterhouse here is something between choice and prime. And what that means is that it came from a young cow and it has a great deal of intramuscular marbling. All that fat in there, that's going to turn into both tenderness and flavor. To enhance that flavor, we're going to do a dry brine, which involves sprinkling every bit of that beautiful piece of meat with salt. Then we're going to put it in the fridge on a rack on the lowest shelf for 12 to 18 hours. After 12 hours, you can see that the salt seems to have disappeared. You can see it on the bone, you can see it on the fat, but you can't see any on the meat. And that's because it's penetrated deep inside, right where you want it. Now that we're ready to cook, score the fat almost all the way through in an X pattern. This extra surface area will make it extra tasty after the sear. That done, season every side with freshly ground black pepper and granulated garlic. If you season your board, you can roll the edges around in it to make sure they're well coated. Put it in a vacuum seal bag and suck the air out to prepare it for sous vide. So for sous vide, I've been using these bags for a long time. They're reusable silicone, and the main thing I like about them is that they are a lot more eco-friendly than using plastic and throwing it away every single time. Um, the disadvantages to them are they're pretty hard to open once you're done, which is kind of annoying, and they're really, really hard to get all the air out. Now those other bags that you just saw me use, I just got them. Um, the little hand pump is a little quirky and a little awkward, but those bags are reusable too, and so I'm I'm still going to go with those. They also came in a great big pack, so there's a lot that you can use for freezer bags and stuff. There's way more than you need for sous vide. So anyway, let's get back to the steak. Now the valve on these bags can't go underwater, so they give you a little clip you have to attach to keep them out. I've got a metal rack with a bar that helps hold things underwater. So with the bar in place, we're going to cook this thing at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. With a half an hour to go, get your charcoal chimney started. We're going to cook right on top of this, so don't need the rest of the grill, just one rack. After two hours, pull the steak. Sous vide is notoriously ugly when it comes out of the bag, but don't worry, once we put a sear on it, it'll be just lovely. And speaking of sear, that's why we're using the charcoal chimney. We want this to be extremely hot and extremely fast. This thing is going to spend no more than two minutes on the grill total. Because remember, it's already fully cooked. We just want that nice hard crust and all the flavor that comes from that charcoal. We're going to give this 30 seconds and then we're going to give it a quarter turn. Because this fire is raging hot and the meat is right on top of the coals, the fat is going to melt and it's going to drip down and it's going to start to burn and flare up quickly. That's okay. That's actually part of what we want here. It's going to be good. Trust me. Now that first 30 seconds was in real time just to give you an idea of how long this takes, but I don't see a reason to make you sit through another 90 seconds on the fire. And there you have it, a perfectly grilled, super juicy, tender, delicious porterhouse steak. And speaking of tender, check this out. You can cut it across the grain with a fork with no problem at all. Mmm. Let's eat. Thank you for watching, everybody. Please click like down below and don't forget to subscribe.